Swift's music video literally just dropped like a few minutes ago and I don't know about y'all but I'm really digging this dark Taylor but that's just me maybe it's because I have a dark soul like Lydia and Wednesday Adams hey guys what is up welcome back to my channel and today we are continuing the haunting of Vicksburg which is Mississippi except this is episode 2 so this is spirits under siege aka fu part 2 Nick Groff and fu Ghosts of Shepherdstown. So this is a citywide investigation, right? They're doing three parts to this. It's not something we're used to seeing. I wasn't the biggest fan of it either, but it's really cool they got to go to these locations because they are historical to the United States. So saying that you got to at least go there and spend some time, I'm not sure if there were like actual budget cuts like in production because I do know that the cost of Annabelle was probably very high to get her and an escort. Like, they claim Annabelle was escorted to Las Vegas from Connecticut. So, however much it cost to convince Lorraine Warren to allow Zach to see Annabelle was probably very high. So, there's probably more behind the haunts of Vicksburg. It's not just that it was an FU to Nick Groff, but I think it was also maybe budget cuts because... I think that the Halloween episodes this year are going to be epic from Ghost Adventures. Okay, so in this episode of the Vicksburg, we're going into an abandoned hospital that was um, big in 1832 and it was known for having smallpox and also for taking care of soldiers with injuries of the actual Civil War. This haunted house, um, basically this owner said that he's trying to do construction on it in order to sell it, but when he has construction tools come in, the tools end up disappearing or sometimes the actual uh, renovation process will reverse by the next day. So things will go back to as the way they were. So it's almost like something doesn't want it to be restored. Something doesn't want him to sell it. Zach did say something compelling in this, which was when spirits reverse things or don't want you to continue construction, things like that, that it could be evidence of a spirit in need I find that to be very true. So I didn't see this on the demonic or dark side as much as I saw it on these spirits probably still see this big home as it was in the 18, early 1900s and they just don't want it to change. Could there be darker energy that's actually keeping them there? I mean, it's a possibility, but I think it's more likely to say that they are happy with where they are and they don't want it to be any way else. Now inside of this haunted hospital, they claim there is a dark malevolent spirit named Michael. And they did catch an EVP, another ghost hunting group caught an EVP that said, kill her when they brought in the female investigator. Now, once again, let's just talk about this for a minute. How important it is to not only have male investigators, but female investigators. Think of all of the locations that Ghost Adventures has been that they may have missed some critical, critical evidence of actual females being there to help them investigate. I know that Jay Wosley's ex-wife Ashley used to be a part of the group. There are so many missed opportunities that Ghost Adventures has that they could have had better interaction or communication, even evidence with spirits if they would have at least one girl involved with their team. So I think this is another one of those moments. If a girl had been slightly attacked or um, told kill her by this malicious force in this hospital, they should have brought in a female to investigate with them, to up their antics, to up their investigation. So I was disappointed they didn't bring anyone external in for this. Going into the investigation, Aaron and Jay use the thermocam 
to basically scout out inside of the hospital and they end up not only hearing like loud bangs and thermal images but they also get like a full-bodied human um, trespasser is what they think that's on the thermocam. This goes back to everything I've said before, which is when you're doing an outdoor investigation or a location like this, which is it's not secured, even ghost adventures, the highest on the chain in paranormal could not obviously afford to get security to secure the entire building or didn't have them check it thoroughly enough. There is still people living in that hospital. Um, and they think that they might not be fully mentally, you know, aware of what they're doing and why they're doing it. So this goes back to be safe, please. I am begging you guys as investigators to be safe because these are the dangerous locations and it's not even the apparitions. It's the humans that probably shouldn't be there. Now let's go into the Elks Lodge while they're investigating. This is where Bill Chapel is there. He sets up this huge EMF vortex. He's using all kinds of random paranormal equipment to basically charge the air full of electromagnetic fields so that hopefully an energy can come through and communicate. And all of a sudden this really dark um, piece of wood falls and just barely misses Bill Chapel. Zach starts screaming, stay where you're at, stay where you're at, and Bill's like got his hands up like he's about to get arrested. Billy says, you know, that could have really hurt you if you were any closer. And Bill, Bill Chapel's like, yeah, I know. And I was like, I didn't want to hear Zach say, are you okay? Instead, he asked Bill Chapel to check it. What is that? What's going on here? And it just, I don't know. Once again, please keep your investigators in mind as your number one priority because yes, that's a great compelling piece of evidence that a piece of wood was lifted off the floor and thrown, but you know, if it kills somebody or knocks someone out or causes a concussion or brain damage, you're down an investigator. So please make your priority each other Please make your priority your investigators because lives can't be replaced. You don't want them to cross over to the other side, you know? So now Aaron and Jay are now in the basement. They're hearing like what they think is a hiss. So Aaron like turns around and runs upstairs. All of a sudden you see this crawling thing on the wall, which I, I did get a clip of it. And just for a moment, I wanted to address what exactly a crawler is. I will tell you that I have seen crawlers before. Sometimes people call them night crawlers. Um, you know, it depends on the interaction that people have had. Generally, everyone says the same thing about a crawler, which is um, it's possibly an inhuman spirit, not necessarily demonic, but that doesn't mean it, it couldn't be demonic. But it will crawl on the walls and the ceiling, sometimes at a very slow, creepy pace, Sometimes they have very inhuman reactions, meaning their arms can bend different ways than an actual human, which is what led people to believe that crawlers and night crawlers are inhuman. Are they dangerous? I don't know, but I feel like they're very territorial. I have only experienced crawlers in Jerome, in Jerome, Arizona. I've actually experienced them several times in the old hospital. This to me was totally 100% a crawler captured on video. In fact, I don't think I have ever seen this good of evidence caught of a crawler. And if you notice, its arm is almost this like strange fluid movement and it's going upwards, which, you know, I don't know if a human spirit would ever be able to crawl up a wall. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but this is classic evidence of what a crawler or people that have witnessed crawlers is to look like, okay? I believe that they're territorial. I, I get the feeling from being in the presence of a crawler that they're almost like minions, meaning they will witness what you're doing and report back to something else, if that makes sense. And I got that same kind of vibe um, when Jay and Aaron had just happened to witness this. It was almost like it was watching them and then it crawled through the ceiling to like report up what they were doing or what was happening. So I found it very strange. I found it very creepy. And this is a classic example example of exactly what a crawler is. 
If you guys have ever experienced crawlers, I'm going to ask you to leave comments below about it. Let's once again start a community discussion about it because I think that people that experience these sometimes get afraid to come forward and say, yes, I have experienced that because it's something that's a very strange phenomena. So let's discuss this as a community in the comments below and let's not make people afraid to discuss this and actually talk about them witnessing what a crawler is. So Zach, Billy, and Bill Chapel are in this vortex and they are now trying to get something to communicate through the spirit box, through the PSB7, and for like 20 minutes, nothing comes through. So this is once again proof that even though Bill Chapel has set up this unbelievable vortex that should basically summon anything you want into it to be able to communicate because they have nonstop energy, it doesn't mean that they always will. It means that you could set up the perfect scenario for the other side, meaning giving them all the energy of electromagnetic fields that you think any ghost would ever want to be able to use to communicate. And sometimes they don't want to, or like I've said, that has to have that perfect piece at the perfect time for our world to be able to interact with theirs when that veil lifts. And this is one of those examples. You set up the perfect scenario and nothing came through for 20 whole minutes. And this is proof that this is a little food for thought. I just want you to, to keep this in mind. We as investigators always think we're watching them, right? We're investigating them. We are seeing what they're doing. We're trying to get them to communicate with us. This is one of those instances you need to think about what if they are the ones watching you? What if they're investigating you and what if they're trying to see what you're doing? It's a little creepy. I'm not trying to creep anybody out, but seriously, it goes both ways. Aaron and Jay go outside. They don't even know how they ended up outside and stumble across bags and bags of human feces, human fecal matter inside of baggies, which is obviously someone is living inside of the, you know, this abandoned hospital. And it's that whole old saying, don't shit where you eat type of thing. And they are going to the bathroom in bags and throwing it out the window. They are very lucky they didn't run into someone that seriously might not be there fully to a mental capacity. Um, who knows if they have weapons. You just don't know in the dark with the condition of the building that it's in. I can't blame them for kind of calling it quits on the investigation shortly after that because that would have scared me as well. Especially as many bags that were there, that tells you that there have been people or a person staying there for a very long time in the exact same location in the exact same room because when they're throwing out the window in this pile, they are leaving it in the exact same spot. So this has been a repetitious thing and Aaron and Jay are lucky they didn't happen to run into anyone when they were up there. Unlimited funding with Ghost Adventures and they still couldn't secure the building. And I'm not saying it's Ghost Adventures fault. The security or police could have gone in there to clear it out, which I assume they did because it's Ghost Adventures and then someone may have snuck in. So even with the money and the power of Ghost Adventures, they can't even secure a spot. So what is that lesson to you guys? Be safe when you're in locations like this. In abandoned buildings, abandoned houses, they're the most dangerous. Unfortunately, you're gonna get squatters, you're gonna get homeless people, you're gonna get mentally you know, handicapped people that need a place to stay, that need a place to sleep and this is the only option that they have, but you have to keep you and your team safe. That has to be the number one priority. Now, I do have to say something that could make everyone upset, but I'm gonna have to say it because you guys know that I'm all about being real on my channel and I have to continue that attitude, which is if they in fact did find fecal matter outside, which was bags and bags of it in the same location, there is a potential that all of the pieces of evidence that came from that building, from that abandoned hospital, could be fraudulent. There is a huge probability that all of those bangs and noises that they heard we're humans, in fact. You don't know. The place is so big, there's only two of them investigating. This is one of those times where you either need full security on staff or you need a really big team to cover different wings at the same time to make sure that it stays clear and safe and free of real humans. So I have to say, unfortunately, seeing the fecal matter makes us wonder, were all of those noises that Aaron and Jay captured, were they humans 
or were they spirits? I do know that they had that really great um, crawler on the wall. I agree with that. The hiss, but was the hiss real? We just don't know, unfortunately. So we have to call a spade a spade and say that all of these noises are unidentified. We cannot determine that they were actually all paranormal. So now Zach's back in the Elks Lodge. He is on this like swaying stair area. The whole place is so condemned. The whole place is so bad. It's in such bad shape. Honestly, if you're asking my opinion, the whole building should probably be condemned. They even showed a shot from the outside of this abandoned home and it was all swaying to the side. And unfortunately, if the entire framing of the home is swaying there's usually not a whole lot especially a house like that as old as it is there's not a lot that you can do to save it so honestly they would probably be better off just condemning the building for the shape that it's in zach went up to the um upstairs which is almost the attic he thought he heard children talking and then he ran all the way outside to make sure that there weren't children outside in the street to debunk it Considering that that building it has so many floors and it's so large, I felt like that was really unnecessary. I appreciate him trying to debunk it for us to clear himself and clear his name. It's just such a large building and it's so high up. I just felt like it was very unnecessary. Aaron and Jake go on the roof. The roof is sinking, which is incredibly dangerous. And all I can say is I'm glad that they got out of there before it actually caved in. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the ending of this, which is once again, a really weird ending which is where they're doing this ghost hunters taps review kind of thing and you know I, I it's weird I don't get it I don't know if it was just for Vicksburg if they were just trying to do something different a lot of you have messaged me that you didn't like it and it was not your cup of tea for ghost adventures it's not the typical way they end a show I agree with you I don't like it I understand that they're trying to kind of cover and go over evidence and like with this particular case, they reviewed back with Bill Chapel and Zach finally did say, um, you know, you could have actually been very injured by that piece of wood falling. I did get why they reviewed this at the end. This is where Bill Chapel comes in and he's going to review the magnetic field data with everyone that he's, he's captured. He's actually recorded change data change. Barometric pressure change had a fluctuation and so did the humidity increase, which actually didn't shock me because We've had other instances where we have been able to detect humidity fluctuations. So we do know that barometric pressure along with humidity do have fluctuations when you're getting some sort of, um, I want to say poltergeist activity, but I'd rather just say high electromagnetic field um, data recordings because it doesn't necessarily have to be poltergeist activity. It can also be an EVP or any sort of interaction that we capture as investigators. This is just great. Like this makes me love Bill Chapel because he's so legit. He's, you know, to me, the only engineer in the field other than Gary Gaka. Bill just gets the physics side of this. Like, and I, I'm such a nerd when it comes to physics with paranormal and engineering for that matter. And, and Bill just gets it. The way he does this, the way he sets things up, the way he invents equipment. Bill is the godfather now of paranormal equipment, so I'm just so glad we get to see him um, interacting and actually functioning with Ghost Adventures to see what he brings to the table as far as inventions go. So Zach did give an interesting term which I just wanted to repeat, which is using spiritual muscle to move the board. So I just found that very interesting. I like the way that's worded. Rather than using poltergeist activity, because I feel like that word automatically is going to set people off and scare them, I like the term spiritual muscle. So let's try to start using that more as a community. It's when a spirit is actually using electromagnetic fields in the environment to make something called spiritual muscle to move or interact with us on this plane. So obviously we do know that manifestations or communication does cause electromagnetic um, data increases along with environmental data increases and this is where we're able to actually document those changes and fluctuations and not only prove paranormal through film and through ghost gear but through science. Finally at the end Zach does tell Bill you could have been seriously injured and I'm like dude you should have you should have addressed that a little sooner. So. I understand that he didn't want Bill to move, that he wanted to document you know, the actual evidence as it's happening, but 
I just wish he would have had a little bit more compassion and emotion for the fact that <laughs> Bill could have died. Like seriously, he could have gotten knocked out and, and sent to the ER. So what did you guys think about this episode, part two of Vicksburg? Let me know what you think about in the comments below. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next time. Let me know when you're ready. Wait, you just moved the whole thing. You're moving the camera. Did I just do that whole monologue with your pretzels and Pepsi in the background? <laughs> it's, it's too late. It's too late. It's already, it's over. It's too late. Drops the mic. Crystal out. Oh, oh yeah.